day, viewers, and uh, welcome to another episode of Reminiscences. Uh, today, our guest is Al Haji Yusuf Garba Ali, who is a businessman, an administrator, and a politician, uh, all in one. You recall him having been for more than 10 years the managing director of Unipetrol. Uh, he was also a sports administrator, one time chairman of Nigerian Football Association, and a politician uh, where he chaired the All Nigeria People's Party, which eventually merged uh, with the other parties to form the current ruling party, the APC. Alej Yusuf, I'd like to welcome you to the program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have having you, me on your program. Thank you. I'd like to start by asking you, it seems you have a dual background. I don't know whether it is Jaws or it is Kano. I know, I know you, you belong to, to the both. Well, uh, well I mean, uh, I don't have dual. I have one. <laughs> okay. Uh, truly, I was born in Jaws. But uh, we are from a village here in Kano, uh, within the Garumala local government. There's a village there called Kuiwa. So we all from there. Uh, even when we are in Jaws, we maintain the relationship. Uh, all our relations are all there till tomorrow. Right. That boy who was calling me from the village, he's just right. coming from the village. Right. So uh, I have only one. Right. Uh, we grew up in Jaws, right. uh, school in Jaws. We know everybody there, but uh, we left it. Tell us about early life in Jos. Your Pardon? school. Early life in Jos. Tell us about it. Your schooling. Yeah, Jos. Well, you see, we. Uh, I don't know. Everybody. There are too many people who grew up in Jos. Who were born in Jos. Who really left Jos after some time. People like Leti Abu Bakar. You know, almost all the sons and grandchildren of the late Alkali of Jos. All, all, everybody ha has to go back to their own origin. Uh, simply because I think right from the word go, uh, we envisage that this sort of thing, tribalism will go to step in. And since everybody knows where he comes from, and you have your relationship, so why do you so we, go back? How was your school, early school life? Was it all in Jos? Did you school all in Jos? I did in Jos. Yes. But I did my primary school, you'll be surprised, in, in uh, Kafanchan. Mm. So I know the area, I know Plato very well. Mm. I grew up with them. Mm. Uh, we schooled with them, mm. both Christians and Muslims. Yes. And uh, it was very nice then, I mean, you know, the relationship was not that bad. Mm. The relationship was very, very good, very cordial, uh, not like what is happening today. After schooling, did you start working in total? Because I see you spent a lot of your career. No, I started, first of all, I started working here in Kano, straight ahead. We met, I, left, I came back to Kano. This is after and, secondary school? Yeah, and I was uh, staying in the city with uh, aunt, uh, and I started work at uh, at the airport. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Kano that, airport. Uh, very early. Kano airport here. Kano airport. Yes. Of course. Then later on, we had a small. I don't an interview for. They were recruiting northerners into the customs and excise department. And. Quite a number of us applied, we were interviewed, we won, we were trained. And then it was, the custom was divided into two. They have what they call water guard. Mm. They have what they call maritime. So water guard are supposed to be the ones in charge of uh, prevention. The maritime are the one collecting duty at the port or at the 
airports and so forth. Mm. People like Aliko, Aliko Mohammed, yes, of Kaduna, the, the former secretary to the government. Pardon? Uh, the former, the former secretary to the government. No, 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 no. Aliko Aliko, Miso. Okay, okay. Uh, Miso. Yeah, yeah, Miso. Yes. So, well, quite a number of them were all were all together there. Right. But when they he resigned immediately, I think he got a scholarship straight ahead. He went to study accountancy. That's right. And when they then they made the water guard to be a force, mm. like police, mm. they would carry gun, they would, and we all run away. Mm. <laughs> I don't like anything force. Mm. Then we went. I went into t total. Total. Total, as a sales rep. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing because, I mean, at that particular time, I don't think any one of us in the North knows anything about, uh, 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 what do they call it, this examination that we do. I was employed here in Kano. I was sent to Lagos. I've never been to Lagos in my life. Mm -hmm. I was very young. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in their office for about two months. All of a sudden, they said there's going to be an aptitude test. Mm. I've never heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> never heard about anything aptitude test. And we're over, I think there were over 1,000 people who applied. And then we all went for the examination. I don't know what happened. I don't know how I won. Really, I mean, I didn't know that I can win. So anyway, I scored very well and uh, were trained and then I became a sales rep back to Kano, Kano back to Abuja as an assistant to a district manager called Mohammed Farouk and Farouk retired and I took over from him as a district manager in charge of Kaduna, Sokoto area, and so forth. I work in Jos, looking after Makadi area. And then from there, I grew up to become the regional manager, North, or the then called branch manager. So uh, that's how my life started at Tota. And uh, from there, I grew up to become a director of the company. When you became director, did you have to move to Lagos? You were executive director at one point? Well, you see, I was first of all app appointed a director. I was in Kano. Mm. Then we went, I went to Lagos one day for a meeting. The union had their own grievances. As a management staff, they brought all the resolutions for me to see, and I signed. And I think it was a month to a board meeting in Paris. After a board meeting in Paris, the chairman of Total Worldwide called me and said, showed me the letter. Is this your signature? I say yes. Why did you sign? Don't you know that you are a director of this company? I say yes, because I believe in what they are saying. So he said, okay. Some of the things they said, you must go back, we'll transfer, you, you must go back to Lagos and be part of the decision making on this. So we, you must be able to implement some of these things and you must be part of it. So you have to move to Lagos. From Kano? From Kano. Yeah. I had no alternative but to move. And I took over as a director in charge of marketing. So there I was. At what point 
did Total became Unipetrol? Or is it, is it a Total? Pardon? At what point did Total became Unipetrol? Because you Unipetrol. ended up as managing director of Unipetrol. Another... Well, you see, I was a director in Total and in charge of marketing. Mm. Then late Dr. Lukman okay. was then the minister of Perule. Mm. He approached me and said, this is the condition of Unipetro. We would like you to come and try to change it. Because it was then 100% owned by the federal government. Mm. Well, I decided, I said, okay, let me have, give it a try. But Total were not happy. Mm. There is nothing they have not done to entice me that I should not go. Mm. I said, look, gentlemen, I have not done NYSE. During our time, there was no NYSE. Mm. So let me go and do my NYSE to the, with the government. Mm. If I don't like it, I will come back. Reluctantly, they released me. They allowed me to go. So that's how I took over mm. as managing director of Unipetro. Mm. It was one of the worst companies, really. Mm. Really, nothing was working. Nothing. So how did you manage? You stayed there for 10 years as, as, as managing director? Well, well what, what I did is that I had this experience. You know, remember, I mean, you have been a sales rep. Mm. You become a district manager, you became something, you know, all in marketing. Or pet, the same product, the same petroleum products. Mm. And I decided, let me give it a try and bring my, that my experience to bear on this company. I did, not, I did not suck any of the stuff I met there. I didn't. All I said is that, this is the, the way, new way. This is how it has to be. And I made one or two changes, for instance. I made Amenu Abakusa with somebody, I've forgotten, in national something from Katsina. Mm -hmm. They brought Alaji Paki as executive director. There is one George Kogba from Benway also as executive director. Mm -hmm. So, and then Jibrin then came as minister. Yeah. Jibril Professor Ramino. Jibril Ramino. He brought all these two people. And he took um, Abagala, mm. also from the NMPC, back to AP. So I went to him and said, look, you have reduced our strengths in NMPC. So, can I suggest something and give you some more stuff? Mm. He said, yeah. So I took Aminu Abokusa from Unipetro, sent him back to NMPC, and this chap from Katsina back to NMPC. So that's how we continued. Yeah. And it reached a stage where NMPC wrote me a letter that uh, the company is owing them so much. You in petrol. You in petrol, yeah. owing so much. If we don't pay within a certain period, they are going to stop supply. So I said to them, I'm doing my best. You either allow me to do it or you take over your job. I'm not keen. I will go back to where I come from. So they asked me to give them a proposal or how, what to do, and I give them my proposal, the company's proposal. And um, one of the proposals was that Unipetro started building an office at Victoria Island. And I said, okay, buy equity there. It's a, it's a 14 story building, you know, just by a co holiday inn. Mm we call Stallion House yes. then. And they bought the idea. So that reduces the debt. Mm. And we'll continue that then. And I paid them off. Yeah. 
and we were making profit. There was no aviation. We were, they have closed the aviation airline. The lubricants was not working. Uh, I formed a company called Stallion Properties. Mm. And if you look at Abuja, there is a, a, a company there, there's a building there, mm. estate, mm. built by the company yes. Stallion. Mm. And we made, they made some profit. Mm. I, I don't have a land there. Mm. I don't have a block or anything. And when we were all talking about ECOWAS, my belief is that ECOWAS cannot work unless, unless there is a trade in between the two nations or any, all our nations mm. within the sub-region. So what I did first of all, was to go into Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone had a small refinery, 10,000 barrels. It has never worked. Mm. I went in there, we bought it through the Central Bank of Nigeria. Mm. And the late Abacha was a friend to the last president, so I mean, we fa they facilitated things easy for us. Mm -hmm. and Nigeria acquired it, a small refinery. And we built some petrol stations in, in Togo and Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. We also opened the stations in Ghana. We opened stations in Togo. I mean, all this trying to diversify, mm. to make sure that there is integration. Mm. So uh, that's how we have. Mm. And I'm, I'm not regretting what I've done. I think I'm proud of what I have done because we have achieved something. Unipetro, until I became the, the chairman of all the marketers in this country. Mm. And we... And we worked well, really, I mean... I'm proud of what we have done. So was Unipetrol the, the, high, the highlight of your career in business, in the oil business? Was mm -hmm. it from there you, you retired? Well, then I retired. Yes. Uh, after that, I, I retired from the oil company yes. and contested an election uh, for the chairman show APP. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I was elected. Uh, really, I didn't. I regret. I don't regret. You know, one thing is that there's no money. Mm. We're in the opposition without money. Mm. The governors were not funding us. I can tell you that the four years I spent, the whole amount of money we have had is less than one hundred million naira for the party. For the party. Mm. I've used my vehicles and so forth, all, not, not, no party. There was no single vehicle for me to run a, a party leadership. So what motivated you to go into politics? You are here, you are a successful see, businessman. And... Yeah. Mm. It's like once I was discussing with Party Tommy, mm. one day in the plane, and I said, unless people from the private sector go into politics in this country, we're not going to progress. Mm. And I still maintain that. Mm. The unfortunate thing is that most of us in the private sector, people will tell you, oh, politics is a dirty game. Mm. But the same people whom you see they're dirty, you go back begging them for favors. Mm. These are people who don't know anything about budget. Uh, look at all the ministries. Is there any maintenance? Have we got vote for maintenance and so forth? So, I mean, the, unless seriously, Nigerians were serious. 
unless people in the private sector sacrifice and go into politics, I don't see a way out. So, so what would you say you achieved? You made the sacrifice. You went into politics. Yeah. I said you made the sacrifice for yourself. Yes. You went into politics. Absolutely nothing. What, what did you achieve? One thing I say I can I, I said I have achieved is that I've educated quite a lot of people. I have my job really is to help, mm. and I help a lot of people. If you look today in all the two political parties, most of those holding key positions are AMPP members, mm. both in PDP and AM, APC. Mm. Both of them. Mm. So yeah. I think one can, has Can you achieved. give an example of names? I but, talk of, uh, yeah? Can you give names? I talk of, which names are you... Which, which names, which examples do you have? Of, oh, of the people? Yes. Ooh, look at... Uh, uh, what do you call him? Uh, this chap from... Uh, the Delta, who who wanted to Urubebe. Urubebe. Yes. people like them, all mm. of them. Look at the chairman of PDP who has just gone down from the uh, Edo. Obi. Okay, then Obi. Yes. Yes. Then Obi. Yes. Uh, so many, all of them. Mm. Even the North, there are too many of them. Mm. Even General Buhari. Mm. Was an APP man. Hmm. All right. So I mean, uh, I think we've done we've done enough, and we're we're, we're still struggling. We're hmm. still trying to see what we can do, hmm. really, to help this country. One remarkable thing is you are party chairman, but you never contested for for election yourself. No, I you know I did contest an election. Hmm. Uh, 79 or something in the constitution. Okay. When I was the regional manager to tell, mm. I was also a nominated councillor in Reno local government. And there was to be an election into the Constituent Assembly. Uh, Renault then now there are seven local governments out of Renault local government and I contested uh, with the late Dr. Dati Ahmad mm. I won mm. Dr. Dati was a member of the drafting committee with Rotimi Williams. Mm. And so after winning the election, Rotimi Williams took up the case against me. Because you won against Dr. Detti. Yeah, they, they didn't want I mean, they yeah. said I shouldn't have, but they didn't win and so forth mm. so forth. So, so, uh, and So we, after about three months in the Constant Assembly, I was suspended mm. by court. Mm. I was running in between Udo Doma and Makelani. Mm. Uh, Udo Doma was the chairman of the Constant Assembly. Ani mm. was the INEC man. Mm. So. <laughs> You know, funny, we didn't, I didn't know that these people are different. Mm. I didn't know that this man is Cross River, this man is Aquaibo. Mm. Anyway, at the end, I can tell you one thing that I have to, people have to know is that I'm in Kano, no money, no nothing except I'm with Mother Aminu Kano. Mm. And Justice Nasir, mm. no, no, Nasir, uh, who was the last president of the, the not of the Nasir. Umar Abdullahi? Eh? No, 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 long before them. Justice Bello? Bello, mm. Justice Bello. Mm. 
I went to Justice Bello and said, this is my case. Can you help me? He said, no. I like your case. I'm biased, so I'm not going to do anything about it. I can tell you I'm not going even to sit when the, when the case comes up. And believe me, he didn't sit. I mean, these are people of honor. Mm. Really, I mean, you can't have that now. Mm. Stata, he said, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit. I'm a member of the panel, but I'm not going to be there. Because I don't want to be involved with this case. And at the end, I won the case. And that is the only, no, I contested another election. Sorry. In AMPP. And this is my problem, I think. I wanted to contest for the presidency. And uh, the same Malaman Kano, the Nigeria, came at 2 a.m. and so forth and begged and said, well, please, let's not disrupt General. Thank you, Mr. So. So, so he left you for Buhari? Okay. Your party was uh, part of the group that came and formed the APC, the ruling party. You are the chair of the AMPP when, when this uh, merger was done. Are you satisfied with the outcome of that merger and, and, and how the APC has been? Uh, it's my party. I have to say, yes, we are doing well. But there are so many things we should have done. You see, you cannot run a government without politics. Without? Politics. Politics. You must have serious politicians to run a government. Technocrats, you know what I believe is that I'm directed and finish. So if you are always directed, would you have your own initiative? What is your initiative? So, the, so you think the problem of the of the government is there are no se serious or senior politicians no. within it? None. Hmm. Why have you been in a position as a former chairman of one, one of the parties? To advise. Uh, if you have the chance to advise, you can advise. Mm. Everything depends on opportunity. Mm. How come there is no chance? Pardon? How come there is no chance to advise? You are one of the. Well, I mean, we're in. Uh, I don't know if there is. Uh, unless you are invited. You know what I mean? Unless you are invited to come and say, oh, what we have this problem, what can we do? All right, then uh, you can give your own opinion. If you are not, then I mean, you watch like any other fellow. Are you happy with the recent outcome of the APC convention, which, which uh, produced uh, Candidates? Well, yes. I, I did not go to the convention field because of my leg, but I'm for, but fortunately, I think our candidate won. So I'm happy with that. Okay, your candidate being uh, Bola Ahmed. Bola Ahmed Tunubu, yes. So I'm happy. What? 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 Really? What? 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 What do you, will, you, will you say, given your long association, what is his strength? Well, why did he win against even a sitting vice president? Well, don't forget that. Bola, like uh, later Bola, 
has been in politics for long. He has become almost everywhere in this country. Everybody knows him. Everybody has heard about him. Everybody has heard about, most people heard about his achievements in Lagos. So it's always better to have, or well, it's easier for somebody known to have your vote or your sympathy than strange people. I look at uh, uh, this man came third, uh, second, the river state man. Rotimi Amechi. Rotimi Amechi. It's because he has made some noise in this country. He has made a lot of noise, really. I'm going to Dora, I'm going to railway, I'm going to do this, I'm going. So. Yet people say that uh, uh, Tinibu has many problems, among which is his health. Who? Tinibu yes. has many problems. And I like to start with his health. Seems to be a, a challenge. I don't know what problems he has. I mean, every human being has his problem, really. Mm. But uh, I don't know which problems you're talking about. Well, people talk about health. Health. Health, health yes, to begin with. I don't know whether people know really Bola's itinerary, mm. honestly. Mm. Here is somebody who walks at 3, 4 a.m., seeing people almost on daily basis. Mm. Now, Bola had a problem about his knee, mm. like me. Mm. He went for operation mm. on the one and the other one. He had one in Europe, mm. I mean in America first. Mm. Then he came back and had one in Europe. Mm. So, I mean, naturally, it's not, uh, he uh, we must be sick one way or the other. Mm. But it's not that bad as people think. Mm. It's not. It's not. It's not that bad. So I, I believe. I believe that he has the capacity, really, to rule. Mm. And one thing is that, if you look at what he has done in Lagos, mm. it's not Bola himself doing everything. Mm. He is able to get people with the intelligence, people who are prepared to work and produce results. Uh, you know, he, he, maybe he gives them ideas, but they execute. Look at all the governors of Lagos. There's no governor in Lagos who has not performed since he left. So you must give him credit to be able, he is able to identify the right people. It's not that he's going to run Nigeria alone. I mean, he, he can't do it. One other common also problem people raise is the issue of running mate. Well, I don't know. That, that one is left for him to decide. But I, as far as I'm concerned, my main idea is that he must have somebody known, whether a Christian or a Muslim, he must be somebody known, somebody that will be... The, the important thing is that he wants to, we want him to win an election. And what is the best option for him to win an election? It must be weighed. It does not mean that because he has become a candidate, therefore he can put anybody and think that they're going to win. It's not, it's not easy. The important thing is how can he become a president of this country? And that is the important thing. But do you think uh, a Christian running mate will work in the north? A, a well known. It depends. It depends. The, what I'm saying is that I still believe that get somebody known, somebody that the people know. Uh, why was Sunambu elected? Because he's known. It's because he's known, because of his work. It's not because that he stays in Lagos and just believes that he can become a president of this country. How did Abiola become the president of this country? Defeating Bashir Tofa? 
late Bishop Trofa. It's because people know him, because he has been working long in, this, in, in, in all parts of the country. So you must have somebody known. We want to win the election. It's not that uh, Bola has become a presidential candidate, therefore finish everything. No. The important thing, how can we, how can he become the president of Nigeria? One thing about uh, you, which a lot of people know, is that you have strong passion for sports. Yeah. And you were at one time indeed the chairman of the Nigerian Football Association. I want to explore this. Uh, is this something that started when you were young? Did you play well, I, I soccer had, yourself? I had a lot of interest in, in football right from my youth age. Mm -hmm. And I have um, I've been in football administration in Jos. In Kaduna, at one stage I was the chairman of Kaduna Football Association in Kaduna while I was there. Mm. I'm moving to Lagos. In fact, when we were in Kaduna, late Tony Ekazibo was a player with the Air Force. So I when we moved into Lagos, I moved into Lagos, he was in Lagos. I was elected also as a vice chairman of the Nigeria Football Association. And uh, Tony was the chairman and he became the minister of, um, of sports. Uh, he used to say, uh, what do you call himself? Minister of play, play of small picking, <laughs> <laughs> like Tony. Mm. So I had that interest. And, you see, funny enough, we had Nigeria, no, we had good people. Mm. Really, we had very good people as members of the association. Mm. Very, very good people. Members of, from the army, from the police, from the private sector, from the olden zones. Beautiful people. At times, I have to beg people to follow a team. Because nobody, no, no, it's not, it's not money. Mm. It's just the interest. Mm. And we, we have achieved a lot. I mean, during our period, I mean, uh, Nigeria has achieved a lot. Mm. We employed uh, Westerhoff. We brought him. Mm. We brought uh, Bo Joe Bonfrey. Mm. So I mean, these are people. These are things that we've done quite enough. Well, Alhamdulillah, we thank God for that. But you are not a sportsman yourself. You are just interested in sport administration. Pardon? I so can't, you are not I, I, a sportsman. No, no, I play tennis. Hmm. I have, if you look at this in my house, I have a tennis. In Lagos, I had a tennis court. L long tennis. Long tennis. Hmm. I have it here. Hmm. I have it in uh, Lagos. Hmm. You know where Tinubu is living? Yes. It used to be my house. Oh, Bodilum. The famous Bodilum. 76 Bodilum. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So there's a tennis court there. Mm. It's a unipetrol house. Yes. So when people are saying it costs uh, five billion, I love. You sold it to Tinibu? No, 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 no. It's it's a company. Mm. I mean, okay. uh, you, uh, when uh, these boys bought unipetrol, so they sold the house to him. Yes. Mm. You know, so I, I had too much interest in sports, and I really wanted. Nigerians to excel in everything we do. What other sports are you interested in besides football? Tennis. Or tennis. Mm. Tennis. Mm. But anything that will do for Nigerians to excel, mm. if I have an idea, I will give it out. Yeah. Do, you, do you still play? Do you still have time to I, exercise? I cannot, no, I cannot. <laughs> With my leg now, I cannot. I have a tennis court here, mm. but I cannot. But what do you do for? Do you do any? any Nothing ex? now. Mm. All age and leg and so forth. So mm. we have to give up. I have uh, this machine. Mm. Occasionally, I climb it. Mm. Is it an exercise yes. machine? Yes. I have a bicycle, bicycle. stationary and so forth. So once in a while. 
What other hobbies do you have? What, what else do you do in your spare time? Nothing. Hmm. Nothing else. Hmm. What about traveling? Do you still enjoy traveling? You know, it's one thing that... <laughs> It's one thing that I don't bother. My old traveling in Saudi Arabia. Mm. Sorry. So what are you going to do? I, I've traveled when I was a chief executive and so forth and so forth mm. for a meeting in Europe and so forth. So on. what is it? Mm. There's nothing enjoying outside, not really. Mm. Uh, you are a second class citizen, mm. wherever you go. Mm. How do you think we can improve yeah. How do we improve our life here in Nigeria? How do we make it better so that people don't even look forward to, to going out and be... Well, like, look, Chairman, problem, our problem is that it's leadership. The leadership. Mm -hmm. Unless we raise the standard of living of our people, mm -hmm. we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, it's easy, it's easy to do it, really, if we have the right people. I was looking at uh, Ikiti State. Mm. Now, <laughs> they're now doing really, I mean, farming, mm. seriously. Mm. I believe if we're not careful, within the next few years, they will never buy our cows. Mm. They will produce mm. milk and so forth. They will produce. Mm. I was watching always uh, uh, mm. or uh, no, Cross River. The governor once said he went to one country and brought a grass mm. that because of this Fulani something, something, that, that, uh, he went and brought a grass, and that in his area he has never stopped Fulanis in Akwaibo. Mm. He has never. They are there with their cows. And I saw him even with the machine planting the grass. Mm. And he said, as soon as you, they eat, the mm. cows eat it. Within a few days, it will come up again. Mm. Now, this is a cross river. Mm. Has anybody from the north really go and see to see that man and discuss with him? Mm. Are we not the people who need it? What have we done? Mm. Afforestation, what are we doing? The education, what are we doing? If you go to Katagung and you see the Sahara coming in, you'll be shocked. Mm. We're doing nothing. Nothing. So, but when we hear you talking about the problem is leadership, we say, what? Well, but you are the leaders. Why, why are our leaders complaining about leadership? Well, because I haven't got it. You are chairman of the a political party, which became part of the ruling yes, party. But I've told you what happened to us. I've told you we had we had uh, nine governors at that particular time. Hmm. There's nothing. I did not sit down with the governors and discuss. Nothing. A hmm. frustration. There's nothing I've not said about that. They've started it and they abandoned it. Most of them were all civil servants. Mm. They are directed. Honestly, I mean, I just give you two examples. This man from a governor of a Cross River, mm. he has this grass. He said how simple it is. Now we have all the fullness in the north all right nobody nobody is doing anything for them except making noise and pro protect them politically mm. and the newspapers and radio and television finish mm. 
have we ever looking at these people and said, look, look, this is an area. Let's make a borehole for you. Let's plant some grasses for you. So you look after them. I think they were trying to create the reserves. You know, kind of state government. You don't need a reserve. I mean, a reserve. You, how can you have a reserve? Or, I don't understand ranches, the reserve. Little ranches. How can you collect them? They are talking of ranches also. How can you? They are different people. Why? Why do you need a reserve? You want all of them to remain in one place? Because they reserve? Is that what is happening all over in Europe and so forth? Is that what we want? Get them some places and plant some grass for these people. Eventually, if they see the benefit, they will sell their cows and do it themselves. But where, where is the reserve? Where? Have, have you given up on our ability to really fix Nigeria? It's Look, an elder statesman. Chairman, you have to, they have to, we have to train them. We have to show them what to do. Mm. Not by talking. Mm. We have to practically show them what it, what it means. They're not educated, both religiously and so they don't know anything. Mm. We have to show them practically what, what, what they should do, what we ought to do. I mean, we've been collecting money from this Fulani long years back, Jangali and so forth and so forth. We've done nothing. Do you think we can really fix the country? Well, we can fix it. Most of our problem is poverty. Mm. Nothing but poverty. Mm. Nothing. Exploitation. We're exploiting each other. Finish. Am so, I, uh, oh, I mean, take for instance, if we develop these planets, mm -hmm. all right, they have their cows. They look after them. They send their children to school. They look after them, welfare and so forth. Thing will change. Mm -hmm. Things would definitely improve in this country. We're doing nothing. Nothing. We're doing agriculturally. You know, nothing is being done. Mm. You bring in fertilizers, whether good or bad ones. You have not trained people to show the ordinary farmer amount of fertilizer he requires for his land, for him to have a good yield. We've not done. Late Governor Samuel Tulaiki. Tulaiki had a brilliant idea, but unfortunately he will start something and throw it and nobody will follow. <laughs> Almost all the land in Jigawa Samenu has taken a sample. He has trained people in Brazil. They can tell you each soil what you are supposed to plant. The amount of fertilizer you require. This is the sort of thing we require. Mm. Our yield is too poor. Very, very poor. So our farmers are just suffering for nothing. So anyway, um, so what uh, you are you are you are still a very young eight in eighties, and um, you are retired now. You are in Kano. What what do you do on a daily basis? I come out um, rarely. I mean, I wake up about very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, after prayers and so forth and so forth, I remain till about seven eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then I go to sleep. Mm. Normally here, I wait until about 10 o'clock mm. to hear uh, news. Mm. Then I go 11, 12, I sleep. Mm. Wake up at 4 or something. Mm. Then I sleep 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock. 
I come out here about 1 or 12.30 and so forth. We say our prayers and before then maybe there are too many people, so many people who wasn't to see me and so forth. So, so I'm here with people till after my grip. Mm. So what, I see many people waiting to see you. Why? Why are they? Discussions. <laughs> <laughs> Politics. What, what about family life? What is, how is it for you? Oh, my family, I mean, they are, except my grandchildren who are in the United States. Yes. And otherwise, all of them are with their parents. Yes. Uh, I don't know. You've always had one wife? I have always. Mm. Always so. I have uh, six children and so So one died, you know. That, so all the other grandchildren from America are coming up next week. Mm. One of them got married. Okay. Halifa got married, so I mean, he's coming with his wife. Mm. He says she is Palestinian or something like that. Mm. So they're coming to spend their salah here. Okay. So that is that, that time I'm going to be much, much busier. Yeah. With all the grandchildren coming. Yeah. Of course they are all grown up, so yes. mm. well thank you, uh Haji Yusuf Ali. Yeah? I say thank you very much uh, for this very engaging uh conversation. And uh, I hope, viewers, uh, you have followed us in, in this uh, uh, long talk with Al Haji Yusuf Karba Ali, who, as you heard, has uh, had rich experience in several areas of life from business to politics to actually sports administration. Until another episode of Reminiscences, good night.